Hey guys, what's up? It's Rygar the Destroyer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bantha and Tusken Raider from the Power of the Force line of Star Wars action figures. Now this is an absolutely fantastic figure, uh, but before we take a closer look at it, let's go ahead and take a look at its packaging. And uh, here it is. Um, as you can see, it's set up as kind of like a diorama um, with the uh, Tatooine dunes, I guess, in the background. And it has pretty standard um, Power of the Force era uh, packaging aside from that. On the side, it's got a picture um, of the figures, and I believe it's the same on the other side. Yes, it is. Um, and then on the back here, it's got another picture um, of the figures as well as a brief description. If you'd like to read that, you can go ahead and just pause the video. And then down here on the bottom, it shows the other figures that were released um, in this wave. Um, so pretty standard stuff, so let's go ahead and get back to the figure itself here. And now the Bantha stands without the Tusken Raider at about six and a half inches tall to the top of its horns and it's about 12 inches long, not including this piece of hair here at the back. Now, um, Normally I would take the Tusken Raider off the top to look at it, uh, but when you get these right out of the package, they've got them zip tied onto the saddle, um, and frankly they've done such a nice job um, that I don't want to remove it. Um, and the figure frankly is, is pretty basic, um, and you're probably not going to want to use it for anything other than riding the Bantha anyway, but we'll go ahead and run through his articulation um, and his accessories. He's got a swivel in the head, swivel in the shoulder, swivel on the hips. He's got a cut joint right above the knee that allows him to get his legs wide enough to sit and then a hinge in the knee. Uh, so like I said, pretty pretty basic articulation. And he does come with one accessory, of course, and that is his staff. Now, as far as the articulation um, on the Bantha goes, again, it's pretty basic. Um, he's got swivels in all of his hips so you can move his feet. Um, and then there's a swivel at his tail here which just lets this back piece move back and forth. Um, and other than that, there's no articulation. Um, you know, despite, you know, the limited articulation on both figures, I think that this is one of the best Star Wars toys they've ever released. Um, I think it's, honestly, it's just the hair. <laughs> um, you know, they did such an excellent job representing um, the Bantha from the movie. I mean, even though that this is, uh, you know, from the 1990s, even today, this whole still holds up, um, and it's a 100% must-have um, for die-hard Star Wars collectors, um, and it was a must-have for me because I just love um, the aesthetic of this figure. They just did such a nice job. Um, one thing I will say, because of the fur, um, on this figure, you'll want to make sure that when you're buying it second hand, um, it is in pretty good shape because the fur, you know, obviously can get gross. Um, and even if these are in the box, they can get gross uh, because there's like a, I'll, I'll actually just show it to you. Right on the front of the box, there is a little hole cut in the plastic um, that says, check out the Bantha's real feel hair. Uh, and what this does is it lets like a whole bunch of spiders and stuff crawl into the box. Um, and set up nest in there. So just make sure that when you buy these, you know, that you get to look at them pretty close because they can get kind of uh, gross um, if they've been played with a lot. Uh, but anyway, like I said, 100% must have uh, for a Star Wars collector. Uh, so if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. And I guess I'll see you later.